Hello, everyone. We would like to start off by thanking the American Dental Education Association and our schools for giving us the opportunity to be part of the Emerging Leaders Program, and of course, our inspiring instructors, Toby, Marnie, and Brad. Our team, the Dancing Queens, has decided to pursue the project on curriculum integration in US dental education, more specifically, the modes and timing of the integration. To quickly introduce our team, we have Darini from UTH, Samia from OHSU, myself, Lea from BU, Yusuke from IUSD, Jeff from Tufts, Christine from Chapel Hill, and our amazing advisor, Kathy, from the University of Detroit Mercy. Going into why we chose this topic, the National Board Dental Examination is one of the current measures of student achievement in dental education in the United States. It is administered by the ADA and aids the state boards in determining if a candidate who seeks to practice dentistry is eligible to obtain his or her licensure. Since 1993, the NBDE has been administered in two parts. Part one, primarily focusing on biomedical sciences taken by students earlier in their dental education, and part two, focusing on clinical sciences taken towards the latter end. Beginning August 2020, this NBDE format will be replaced by a single integrated national board dental examination, which will combine basic behavioral and clinical sciences. According to the Joint Commission on National Dental Examinations, emphasis of INBDE is on the decision-making process relevant to the safe practice of dentistry. A previous study was already carried out on this topic and it aimed to determine the preparedness of US dental schools for implementation of the INBDE. The study found that top dental schools administrators' attitudes about the INBDE were generally positive, and they reported that 72% of the respondents were prepared. For our study, we aimed to identify and characterize the degree, modes, and timing of curricular integration at accredited U.S. dental schools by surveying their academic deans. This study is the first to assess the landscape of curricular integration in order to facilitate the implementation of integrated curriculum and improve the quality of dental education. Our three main objectives for our study are to define the modes and timing of the implementation of the integrated curriculum at U.S. dental schools, describe how faculty are being trained, and identify the barriers to implementing integrated curriculum, and potentially proposing new mechanisms to facilitate the implementation. Our next step was working on the design of our study. We initially collected the contact information of the academic deans or equivalent positions at all US dental schools. We designed a survey on Qualtrics, which is a total of 16 questions, drafted our protocol, applied for IRB through our separate schools, and once we received the IRB approvals, we sent out the survey to the academic deans by email with a couple of reminder emails, collected our results, and had a statistician review them. Out of the 67 associate or assistant deans of academic affairs, we received a response from 44, which is almost 66%. Now I leave it to Samia to go over the results of our survey. Thank you, Leah. Now that we have learned about the study design and how the survey was conducted, let's go over our findings. The first thing that was looked at was the class size. When dental school were asked about how many students do they enroll each year, we see that most of them enroll somewhere from 51 to 130 students per year. So over 80% of dental schools have moderate to large class size. Next thing was regarding any curricular changes implemented in preparation for INBDE. When dental schools were asked if they are implementing any changes in their curriculum, we see that 86% of schools responded yes, and only 14% of them said no, which I think is a positive response, seeing that majority of dental schools acknowledge that to prepare our students for the new integrated national board examination, changes in our current curriculum are needed. 
Next, we looked at the time required to complete the integration process. Looking at dental schools in response to if they have completed integration at these schools, we see that 39% of schools said yes, indeed they have, um, but 61% of schools have not yet completed the process. Also for schools that have actually completed the integration, majority, such as 57% of them, took three to four years in the process, whereas 36% of schools took one to two years. Now the question that comes to our mind is how recent is this curricular integration? According to this pie chart, we see 43% of schools completed this process less than a year ago. So very recent. 14% said one to two years ago. 21% said three to four years ago. Another thing worth noting is that 14% of schools accomplished integrated curriculum more than six years ago. So they were ahead of the game. On the other hand, schools about 61% that are in the middle of this integration process, when asked about how long will it take them to complete it, 48% of them said one to two years, and 43% said three to four years. So in general, a school can anticipate that the time required for integration can be somewhere from one to four years. Statistical analysis using Pearson and Fisher's test reveal a correlation with p-value less than or equal to 0.05, stating that time taken to integrate curriculum is dependent on the class size. So larger the class size, the longer it took schools to implement integration. To know about the stage where the integration is happening, we ask schools in which years they did or plan to implement integration. The responses showed that majority of schools are making necessary changes in all four years of dental school education. From the picture, we see that not many changes are taking place in during the fourth year of dental school. In regards to modes of integration chosen by different schools, some options such as adding or subtracting courses, changing their sequence, complete overhaul of the curriculum, combining or making changes in existing ones were considered. Looking at the slide, we see that the least popular mode of integration is the complete overhaul of the curriculum, which I think in reality is not an easy task. Majority of schools are focused on either adding or subtracting courses or changing their sequence in their current curriculum or combining courses or making changes in the existing ones to make them more aligned with the teaching philosophy of our new integrated national board examination. Now I will have Darini present the rest of our data to you all. Hello everyone, this is Darini and I will present the remainder of the results and conclusions of our study. Through our survey, we wanted to determine who in the institutional administrative hierarchy had input in designing the curricular change at their respective institutions. Our results indicate that in all schools that implemented curricular change, their curriculum committee had the most input, followed by high-level administrators and course directors. Department chairs and section directors had some degree of input, while individual instructors had the least influence in curricular design. 68% of the respondents also indicated that their faculty were being trained to instruct in an integrated manner, mostly utilizing lunch and learn sessions and faculty workshops. Online training and once a semester faculty assemblies were being used for training purposes to a lesser extent. In our study, we also wanted to find out what methods were being utilized to integrate biomedical and clinical curricula. Incorporation of biomedical sciences in clinical case presentations ranked the highest as a mode of integrating biomedical sciences in clinical instruction. Problem-based learning in early years of the curriculum and incorporation of biomedical sciences in clinic rounds ranked relatively high as well, while our results indicate that clinic evaluations and simulation sessions are not being optimally utilized for this purpose at most institutions. More commonly used methods 
for incorporation of clinical sciences in biomedical instructions by most institutions were implementation of problem or case-based learning in the early years of the curriculum and incorporation of clinical examples in biomedical science lectures. We were also curious to know if changes were made to assessment tools to reflect the changes in instruction. More than 75% of the respondents indicated that changes were made to clinical assessment and greater than 50% of the respondents indicated that changes were also made to didactic and preclinical assessments. Both formative and summative assessments are being utilized by majority of the schools and 75% of the institutions have already incorporated INBDE style patient box questions in their exams. Lastly, we asked what the academic deans viewed as barriers to integration at their institution. 80% of the respondents identified lack of faculty time to prepare integrated courses as the most significant barrier, whereas lack of familiarity with INBDE style question was identified as the least likely barrier. Conclusions of our study are as follows. For objective one, we conclude that majority of institutions that have completed curricular integration took three to four years for completion of the process and they completed the integration quite recently. For objective two, our results show that two thirds of surveyed institutions primarily train their faculty to instruct in an integrated manner through lunch and learn sessions and workshops. And finally, for objective three, we identified lack of faculty time as the primary barrier to implementing an integrated curriculum at most institutions. Based on this study, we recommend that simulation sessions and clinic evaluations be utilized for more incorporation of biomedical relevance in clinical um, arena. Moreover, institutions need to provide their faculty more time and training to prepare and instruct in an integrated curriculum. Intentional efforts to foster collaboration between basic and clinical teaching, along with the development of integrated teaching resources will be beneficial to improve integration. And integration needs to be intentional and consistent across all four years of the dental curriculum. This concludes our presentation. On behalf of the Dancing Queens, I would like to thank Dr. Julian Holland at UT Health School of Dentistry at Houston for providing statistical assistance for the study and the Office of Information and Technology Services at UT Health for their assistance with setting up the Qualtrics survey. We would like to thank our mentor, Professor Kathy Shepherd, for her guidance in this project and constant support. And finally, we thank Adia for giving us the opportunity to participate in the summer program for emerging academic leaders and bringing this wonderful group of people together. Thank you.